Welcome to our program, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. It's good to have you back with us today. Rick Adams with you on this uh, edition of the Deadly Experiment. Deadly Experiment, uh, the flip side of the TV program, the lively experiment, but certainly not the flip side of Roger Williams' colony here, now known as Rhode Island and Providence Plantations. That was a time hundreds of years ago when men's faith was in God. There was no distraction. There was no Talmud vision, TV as we call it. There was no distraction in books and publications and pornography and all of that. There was a deep-seated belief in God. And God was inseparable from the life of Rhode Island. The only requirement Roger Williams essentially laid down was that you do not forbid, you do not forbid the preaching of your gospel or anyone's gospel interfering with that message and your personal belief in God, but not if you were a, a vagabond, so to speak. Uh, not if you were a troublemaker. You were coming here to upset the apple cart, as some were. And now, of course, they've consumed our nation as well as our state. We have a nation in rebellion against God today. We have a nation which is um, totally anarchistic and uh, chaotic. And uh, people are scratching their wooden heads, you know. What's going on? What's happened to America? Will we have a new president that'll wave a magic wand and make it all come back again? I don't think so, folks. Today we're going to spend a little bit of time in our scriptures, and we're going to show you a special video insert into the program that will stimulate, hopefully, you to think about who's in control, how we are rapidly spiraling out of control as a world, not a nation anymore, but as a world. Because America is no longer an independent, sovereign nation. We are an interdependent, one-world nation that is part of a global entity, we're told. And it's true. We don't defend America anymore. Kids don't go into the service to defend our freedom. Quite the contrary. They're defending a new world order of interdependence and not sovereignty. And if you don't believe it, then all you got to do is see what happens if you try to pull out of the economic and political beast system as they've been trying with the Brexit movement in Europe and see how far you get. See how far you get when you try to get back to a true manufacturing base in America where America is an industrialized nation, second to none. Ain't going to happen. And no Donald Trump or anybody else could ever change that. Because you have to realize one simple thing, folks. If you have a house that is crumbling with termites, infestations, you don't repair the house from the top down. You don't go to the attic, you go to the foundation. And America's foundation is rotted morally, spiritually, economically, politically, militarily. In every way, we are, I think most people will admit, a nation in turmoil and in flux. We're an entity that is losing its moorings, if not has lost it. So that's where we are today. And I want to give, at this point, Heavenly Father the thanks. Our Father, Yahweh, Yahshua, in heaven, the thanks first and foremost for the blessings that we have had on these programs all these years, going on 14 years now, that we've been out here like the prophets of old, not claiming to be prophets ourselves, just messengers of the prophets and of the disciples, the apostles, and of the Lord as to what is going to happen to America and this world very shortly. We've been preaching it. We've been teaching it. We've been showing it for a long time. Many listened. Many did not. Many scoffed at us. And Father, we give him the thanks and glory that we're still here. And I'm still here despite setbacks in my life that were turned around naturopathically and by the grace of Almighty God. So we give thanks again for these programs, Father, that it may reach somebody out there, just one or two, who need to be reached in your will according to your will. In Yeshua's precious name. Folks, We've supposedly had another election, this presidential election year, and uh, I say supposedly because, as we've shown you on previous programs and 
uh, many, many broadcasts. America is governed by a political elite, as most of the nations of the world are today. That is a group of people in countries whose names you never hear, who, well, sometimes you do, but you don't see their faces. You don't understand that behind the scenes of presidential politics, congressional politics, there is a, what we call, invisible government. And I didn't make up the term, invisible. Dan Smoot, former FBI agent, who was assistant to the director of the FBI for a number of years, left the Bureau and he began a personal crusade to educate America as to what was coming in the days ahead. And that was in 1959, 1960. And he created the Dan Smoot Report. Then he wrote a book called The Invisible Government, the government you do not see. And that, of course, was refer referencing the Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR. The syndicated talk show host Rush Limbaugh for years denied any such thing. Said it was one of those conspiracy theories that we hear about from the conspiracy theorist mainstream media all the time. And then, of course, it evolved into, I told you so all along. Friends, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, and another here, and another there. So what they denied existed, people like Rush Limbaugh and others, for years, now they readily admit and treat it as if it's just fluff, just nothing at all, just a matter of fact. Folks, we told you that years before we began this television program that there was a ruling elite, and members of the media, of course, most of all, are part of it. And they swear to secrecy. When they go to meetings, there is a not-for-attribution policy. So that what they do and what they say is not for public assumption or consumption. The public never hears about what happens at these meetings. You've heard of the Trilateral Commission. You've heard of all these other interlocking international groups that basically constitute that invisible government. And it was created in America in 1921 under Woodrow Wilson's administration by his uh, chief confidant, Colonel Edward Mandel House. By 1927, it was the Rockefeller brothers that actually created the funding for the Council on Foreign Relations. Ever since then, their influence on American politics, economics, and all of these other issues, including academics, has been overwhelming. So today, we are enveloped in a world that we do not see, and all we do see are the effects of that interlocking control. Hyperinflation, the Federal Reserve, we are seeing the devaluation of the dollar, housing crisis, housing bubbles, housing bursts, lack of construction, new construction. We're seeing interest rates now being announced by Janet Yellen, one of the tribe, telling us that the economy is so good, it's so rebounded since the last recession that we're going to have to have a slight increase in interest rates along the way. And this is just the beginning. A key indicator of who is in control and who is not in control. Now, if you think that Donald Trump in this last selection was the man that would wave that magic wand and bring it all back and put America first and drain the swamp, as he said, well, we told you beforehand on these programs with some of our young uh, recruits and young uh, Christian followers that uh, 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 if it happens, it was meant to happen. Believe me, Roosevelt, when he plotted to get us involved in World War II through the back door at Pearl Harbor, always made the boast that if something happens in politics, you can be assured it did not happen by accident. He said nothing in politics happens by accident. If it happens, it was planned that way. Now, why don't we believe him? As a nation, we've been told to revere the legacy of Roosevelt. Well, his own words condemned him. You see, he was admitting exactly what this government was doing to its own people in that line of succession from before the days of Wilson right through to this current era. And who is in control? What city did Jesus Christ condemn in the word of God, the prophets, 
the disciples, the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is Yerushalayim, and it means the city of peace. Now today it's not a city of peace, it's a divided city ruled over by despots and tyrants. The Zionist regime it is known as, the so-called Jewish state. Well, interestingly enough, no politician gets to office in Congress or in the White House particularly unless they make a pledge not to the United States first, but to Israel first. The bad fig tree that Jesus spoke of in the Gospels planted in Jerusalem in 1947 and 8. And he said, a generation, this generation will not pass until all of these things be fulfilled. And what are these things? We're seeing them now. We saw two devastating world wars. We have seen uh, the, the earthquakes now and famines and pestilences, worldwide confusion, destruction. We're seeing all kinds of volcanic eruptions talked about again, earth and, and, uh, and the signs of, and wonders in the heavens. And these things are just the beginning of sorrows, God said in his word. So the end will come. The end of America will not be averted by anybody who is selected to be in the White House, no matter who or who not they may be. Roosevelt said it was planned that way. Congress is Israeli-occupied territory today, as most of you know. You can't get your food stamps. You can't get your SNAP assistance. You can't get your medical coverage. But once again, Israel comes first and you come last. That's why when Donald Trump was campaigning for office, Donald Trump used the expressions, America first, and immediately it was that group of people, the synagogue of Satan in Jerusalem, that immediately shrieked and howled that that was a terrible thing. It harkened back to a dark day before America was involved in worldwide war and worldwide war would end all of the wars in the future. That's what they were told in World War I. It didn't come to pass. They lied, and they're lying now. And they will continue to lie until all of this earth is consumed with a flood of lies, as it says in our Bible. Your Bible, but you don't read it. You don't want to know it because you're too busy having fun. Too busy thinking we can put off the bursting of that bubble, that financial explosion that's going to take place. See, you think it's going to continue. I won't have to live through it. My grandchildren will have to live through it, as if that's a good gift for your grandchildren. Well, we're now at the end, almost, of that generation of a span of 70 to 72 years of this bad fig tree generation that the prophets and the Messiah himself warned would be the end of this age. I'd like to just, right now, interrupt myself to bring you, with all of the minutiae about the Electoral College that isn't, and this whole business of what's going to happen on January 20th, and whether there'll be an inauguration without any possible unforeseen event that would shut down the American political and economic system overnight. We don't know. God knows. But right now, I'd like to hearken back to Donald Trump on the campaign trail and what he said about who he admires most and where his loyalties really lied. So right now, I think we're going to play that portion of that video, and we'll come right back after this. Pay attention, folks. Following the U.S. stock market crash of 1987, a global recession hit New York real estate. New construction stalled and several big developers declared bankruptcy. As the real estate market slumped, Donald Trump ran out of cash. 
At the beginning of 1990, he owed a combined 4 billion to more than 70 Jewish owned banks. With 800 million personally guaranteed by his own assets, according to Alan Pomerantz, a lawyer whose team led negotiations between Trump and 72 banks to restructure Trump's loans. Pomerantz was hired by Citibank but became lead counsel for the, for the negotiations. So it was from this time in 1990 that Donald Trump became owned by the Jew World Order. And he has been prepared by them for this position as the President of the United States of America. He has not become the President independently. He is not independent. He is fully controlled. for Israel 100%, 1000%, it will be there forever. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. When I become president, the days of treating Israel like a second-class citizen will end on day one. But when the United States stands with Israel, the chances of peace really rise and rises exponentially. That's what will happen when Donald Trump is president of the United States. And we will send a clear signal that there is no daylight between America and our most reliable ally, the state of Israel. I love the people in this room. I love Israel. I love Israel. I've been with Israel so long in terms of I've received some of my greatest honors from Israel. My father before me, incredible. So I want to thank you very much. This has been a truly great honor. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to just put this This is the Jewish Heritage Study Bible. In Palestinian society, the heroes are those who murder Jews. I'm a newcomer to politics, but not to backing the Jewish state. I will meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu immediately. I have known him for many years and will be able to work closely together to help bring stability and peace to Israel and to the entire region. We will move the American Embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. Well, there you have it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the ballyhoo cry from every administration or spokesman, official or otherwise, from virtually every candidate who, as you saw in this last primary season, worked mightily to bow the knee before the state of Israel. Not America, but the state of Israel. Why? Because all of the financial ties, all of the financial ends, all of the economic prizes, all of the fruits of this world system, that is the gold of the money, can be traced to the synagogue of Satan. All of them now are coming into fruition. We've heard some of the names that have been proposed. 
uh, Steve Mnuchin from Goldman Sachs fame, or should I say infamy, again would replace Jack Lew as Secretary of the Treasury. A number of economic advisors, Mr. Schwartzman, Mr. Gold, Mr. Cohen, and others have already begun the process of, quote, bringing back the American economy. All of this is relevant now because it's happened before. But never has it been this apparent that we are going to see the very likely possibility that with a Trump administration, remember the Bible mentions the word Trump, six and seven. The sixth Trump will be Satan's appearance. The seventh is God putting an end to this whole age. So it may very well be that this incoming administration can do what no Democrat, Obama, or Clinton, or anyone prior to it, including the Bushes, could get away with, and that is recognition, after a series of attacks and violence, of Jerusalem as the capital of this Jewish, as they call it, Jewish state. That is, the capital of the Kenite state. The Kenites are sons of Cain, the sons of Cain who were in that same lineage of Cain who murdered his brother Abel and Esau in the, the book of Genesis in chapter 22, uh, 23 rather, verses 22, 23, 24, and 25 where Rebekah, who was the wife of Isaac, bore two children in their womb, in her womb, both of them we're fighting each other, as it says in verse 22 of, of this book, the Bible. In Genesis, we're told, and there are two manner of peoples in thy belly, and one and the other are fighting each other. God said that he hated the one and loved the other. He hated Esau in the womb. And he loved Jacob in the womb. Now the seed lines of both of those children are with us today on this planet, as we will see in subsequent programs. The seed lines are the same seed lines that Cain began. So we are witnessing now two opposite peoples, two opposite manner of peoples on the face of this earth. And wouldn't you know it, that today the discussion is on Russia again, Rush, in Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1, we begin to read about kings of the north, and the kings of the north today would be the prince of Meshach, which would be Russia, Rush. Communism is not dead, my friends. Communism is still very much alive in the new Russia today. They're alive and well, and they're not about to disappear. They went through a metamorphosis of change in the 1980s when we allegedly saw this dramatic metamorphosis where George Bush Sr. could say, my fellow Americans, communism is dead. Well, communism is not dead. It didn't die. It's very much alive here in the United States. And if you don't believe it, read the 10 points of Marxism and see all of them to some extent are in practice today, including a heavy income tax. We see the confiscation of private land, private property being given over to public use, a very strong central public school system with a Department of Education that Pro President Reagan promised that he would abolish upon his entrance into the White House and never did. It's bigger now than ever before, and so on and so forth. Most of all, the abolition of the family would be the most important thing. The family and private property would be abolished. See, God's plan is one thing. Satan's plan and his children are working to destroy the American family, and they've done a damn good job. They have done a fabulous job, and they're doing it in a variety of ways. The family unit today in America is all but laid to waste, my friends. So there's a war coming. It's going to involve Russia and uh, the northern empires. We're going to see Iran dragged into this, and that will involve a war that will also culminate in the involvement of communist China. Communist China was built up by the United States 
after the betrayal in World War II of mainland China to Mao Zedong. That happened under Truman, President Truman. And uh, you heard Mr. Trump immediately, supposedly, raise an ante. And this is open to speculation, I understand. But an ante with China that we're going to raise tariffs and we're going to see uh, a change so that we can bring back American industry. Don't believe a word of it, because it's not going to happen. When you begin to raise trade barriers now, with especially a dictatorship like communist China, you're not in the driver's seat. You're at the back of the bus, because this can develop into a worldwide conflagration where it turns into a military war, not an economic war. And history is our guide, my friends. We're seeing now these two kids, Esau, who came out of his mother's womb, Rebecca's womb, Harry, and Red, Red like Rusha, Rush, that's what it means, and Jacob. And Jacob was, the, of course, the patriarch of all of the people that we know today as true Israel, the Adamic Caucasian people of the Bible. In Europe, they traveled to New Zealand, Iceland, Canada, North America. These are our people, Jacob and his seed. And God says in his word they have a destiny to meet up with. That destiny is going to culminate in this third world war with Russia. And that's why you've been hearing a lot of propaganda about Russia involving itself in this election cycle. None of it is true. None of it has to be true. It has never been proven. But the very speculation, the very implanting in your minds that Russia is a bad guy now, but it wasn't during World War II when it killed effectively 100 million people before, during, and after the war and enslaved millions more. Now we're beginning to see the subtleties of how our minds are being prepared for this next world war. Friends, we told you this for years. We predicted it. There's nothing new under the sun. It's in the word of God. Will Donald Trump be the man who can do what no other president has done? And that is basically recognize Jerusalem, which means Arab East Jerusalem gone as the unified, undivided capital of this entity that calls itself Israel, fulfilling Bible prophecy. The fig tree. Jesus said in Matthew to learn the parable of the fig tree. He said to learn it because it would be the key to end time prophecy. That tree, that tree would be planted in Jerusalem would signal the end of this age, and this age, we're talking 70 years generation. My friends, just about that time has come, and now we're hearing all these things happen before us. Many things will still happen before this is consummated, but it can happen in a short time. Friends, we're out of time today. We hope we've given you some things to think about, because things are not well in America right now in the land of Jacob, and they're not well anywhere. Stay tuned for the next edition of our program. Stay in the Word of God, learn the truth instead of media lies. I want to thank you all for joining us, and remember that we also have our YouTube channel, Rick Adams Uncensored, The Deadly Experiment. Thank you all. God bless, and Yahweh bless his elect.